what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to calculate EFTEs and we're going to calculate productivity right here today. You're going to do it all by yourself. So what is an EFTE? First thing, EFTE is an acronym. It stands for Effective Full-Time Employee and it's a statistic. And many industries use EFTEs. EFTE is really useful because it allows you to see through all the employees you have because you have full-time employees, you have part-time employees, you have management, you have hourly, you have seasonal, you have students, you have overnight employees, you have weekend employees, you've got unionized employees, you've got all kinds of different employees, but with an EFTE calculation, you can see straight through that and see the number of EFTEs you have. And here's the math. So again, this is a statistic and it's used in all kinds of different industries. So it's based on the idea that 40 hours is a full week of work. And we all know that there's seven days in every week. So we simply divide 40 by seven and we come up with 5.714. And that is the daily EFTE divisor equivalent, key number. Don't ever forget that number, 5.714. And to figure out an EFTE for a month, well, we simply multiply 5.714 by the number of days in the month. So in a day, a month with 31 days, it's 177.1. And when there's 30 days, it's 171. And when there's uh, 28 days, it's 160. And the number of hours equaling an EFTE for a year is 2,086. And a leap year is 2,092. So again, to figure that out, all we do is multiply the number of days times 5.714. And the thing about the EFTE is it's really a useful tool. So let's say at the front desk, last year we worked 9,200 hours. You think, well, so what? Well, actually, that's a really powerful number to know because that equals 4.4 EFTEs. And what if, what if I actually had more than one hotel? What if I actually had five or six hotels? and they all have a front desk. How many EFTEs do we have at each front desk? If I could compare them and find out the one that's the most productive, maybe I could learn something from that operation that I could bring back to the ones that are less productive. And that's what it's all about. And once you can figure out the EFTEs, you can figure out the EFTEs per 100 rooms available, per 50 rooms available, per, per whatever you want. It's just a matter of, of doing the division. And you're simply dividing the number of hours worked by the divisors. And it leads to benchmarking, and benchmarking leads to creating a baseline, and the baseline leads to creating the question, why is Hotel B so much more productive than Hotel A? And then you start looking at what they do. You start looking at the layout of the building. You start looking at all the different things that affect that business, and that's where you learn, and that's where you find the clues to improve your productivity. It's no mystery. But this is how you figure it out. So we're all going to do an EFTE exercise. On here, I calculate for you the daily equivalent of an EFTE, simply 40 divided by 7. And here's the monthly. And again, we have different number of days in certain months. So you got to pay attention to that. You figure out what the divisor is for each one of those. And then again for the year. And in this example, we're taking a look at a theoretical housekeeping department and the number of hours it worked on January 15th, the number of hours it worked in the entire month of January, and the number of hours it worked in the entire year. And the first question is, how many EFTEs for January 15th in housekeeping? So to figure it out, we're going to do what? Who wants to tell me? Speak up. <laughs> Speak up. We're going to divide yes. our, what did you just say? January 15th. So we're going to take our hours and divide it into the daily equivalent. Daily equivalent. Okay. Do that. Take 222 and divide it by 5.714. <laughs> Who wants to tell me how many EFTEs we had on January 15th? 38. Correct. You win the prize. Dinner tonight is on me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Second question is asking how many EFTEs do we have for the month? And we worked 5,925 hours. January's got 31 days. So we divide 5,925 by 177.1. And what's the answer? 33.4, correct. 
The last question is, uh, how many IFTs do we have for the year? So what do we do? We divide 76,255 hours by 2086. And what do we have? 36.55. <clears throat> Correct. So that's how you calculate EFTEs. That's all you're ever going to need to know about EFTEs. But you can imagine what it's going to be like when you go back to your hotel and your hotel company and you have, you know the number of hours that people work. You have all that data. You pay people, you should have it. You can figure out how many EFTEs they have every day, every month, and every year. And then once you get that information, you're going to be really annoying to all of the operating people because you're going to be asking them all kinds of questions. Okay, productivity. Why is it useful to understand and track? Well, if we were building anything or running any kind of business or industry, we would want to know how many hours it takes to perform the tasks. That's what we need to know. And in rooms department and in the food and beverage department, we've got to ask ourselves the same question. How many hours does it take to perform these tasks? So hotel productivity today, we're talking about two measures. We're talking about hours per room occupied, and we're talking about hours per customer cover served. So why, I want to ask you, this is my belief, but I want to ask you, why is this the best way to measure productivity? How else do some of you measure productivity right now, or labor costs in your hotels? Percentage of revenue. So do you have any control over the amount of revenue coming through the door? No. No. And who else calculates productivity a different way? We, we do something similar. We do minutes per room. Minutes per room. Beautiful. That's exactly the same thing as this. So the, best, the reason why it's the best way to measure productivity is you have no control, as all of you are learning, over what the government does with wages. And you have no control <laughs> over what happens with the number of customers that walk through your door. You have no, no control. You may have a good forecast, but it might start snowing today and they may all stay home, so you have no control. The only thing you have control over in your business, to any great degree, is what? Starts with an S, it's like nine letters. No, but close. What? Schedule. schedule. The schedule. That's what you have control over. So that's where you need to fish, is with the schedule, not with anything else. Okay, so now we're going to do a productivity exercise. So you can see with this one, uh, my assistant that did the photocopies uh, photocopied the answers as well. So. <laughs> Anyways, we're still going to do the exercise because uh, we want to be able to uh, see this in action. Okay, so now we have the same information on a day, a month, and a year, but we also have the number of units of production. We know how many rooms were sold on each one of those days. So to calculate the productivity, what do you think we're going to do? Who wants to answer the question? Beautiful. That's it. That's it. That's the whole course. You can go home now. That's it. You've just figured out how to calculate productivity. 